Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and uh, if you remember recently, I spent like $300 on Wish, and those packages have come in. So I'm not gonna beat around the bush, let's go open them. Or actually, I'm gonna do one little thing and say that if you missed that video, link is in the description. You might wanna watch it first, you might not, I don't know. Anyway, let's go open some packages. Before we get into this, if you would like to skip ahead, I will have timestamps in the description below, so if there's a specific product you were wanting to see me look at, then yeah, just uh, check the description. All right, let's Let's do this thing. So I've got four things here. Originally I ordered six, but they canceled two of them because of course they did. So we'll start by opening the small box here, which I'm guessing is the Bluetooth speaker. It was $1, so uh, I have very high expectations. Look at this cardboard open and we've got wireless speaker, got some bubble wrap and inside the bubble wrap is our very small Bluetooth speaker. I feel like it looked bigger in the original images. I I'd have to check that, but I feel like this is a bit small. Yeah, this is this is tiny. Um, it's It's got on off switch there. It's got a little SD card slot. It looked like phone button on the top. It's pretty simple. Inside we have a micro USB cable uh, as well as uh, an aux cord here. And uh, yeah, that's all we got here. Wasn't expecting any more, but uh, yeah, I didn't expect the speaker to be so darn small. It's worth mentioning the speaker was more expensive in shipping than it was just to buy. I think it costs like six bucks to ship it, which isn't bad. But uh, to be honest, I don't think I'd pay seven dollars for this thing. Charging it up is easy enough with micro USB and we can turn it on by flipping that switch and immediately we see it light up and it says it's ready to connect to your phone so that process was actually super easy it showed up right in my Bluetooth settings I was able to connect immediately so that was nice to see uh, unfortunately though the audio quality leaves a lot to desire the LED doesn't really seem to react at all to the music which I was kind of hoping it would it just kind of fades through colors which is kind of neat I guess but really really basic the sound is well I'll let you listen to a portion here. Keep in mind, this is just my camera mic. It's really hard to tell just how bad this is. Uh, it's not good. It's not very clear. It doesn't get very loud. In fact, I would say my iPhone gets louder. All in all, it's worth what I paid. I mean, $1. They could have made it better, but hey, it could have been a whole lot worse. At least it works. Okay, next up, we've got this not at all sketchy looking box. And this is some real tough tape, but you know, I'm a man, so forget scissors or a knife or whatever. I'll just open it with my bare hands instead. Yeah, I'm, I'm really smart. Anyways, I finally got this thing out. It's a bubble wrapped, what looks like an iPhone box. Uh, except it has literally no markings on it, except for a line and quad camera. Clearly they put a lot of money into the packaging. We open it up and on the top we have bubble wrap again. That's a good sign. Going in, here's the phone. This is the Android phone I got. That was $94 Canadian and they called it the Mate 40 Pro top quality Android, blah, 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 blah. Here it is. And uh, right away I can tell this isn't what it looked like in the advertising. They advertised a full screen display and you can see the bezels. Um, and this phone, it actually looks pretty nice. We pull off the plastic from the back here. It's a very nice purple, very eye-catching. Uh, the problem is, while it looks glass, it is definitely plastic, and it's very cheap feeling as well. The phone is very light. Uh, this clearly is just a piece of garbage, but I have to say they did a good job at least making it look good from the back, even if the front is nothing to write home about. Going through the rest of the box, we have that cover, and then a uh, charging brick here, which I'm guessing is for Asian countries, so it won't work here. Uh, then we've got some cheap headphones, which I'm actually kind of impressed they included, to be honest with you. And then we have a micro USB cable. Going further in the box, we have this plastic wrapped plastic case with some foam inside. So they include a case and the screen protector was pre-installed. So, you know, cheap phone, but hey, I guess that's a nice touch. Uh, to be honest, the case kind of makes it feel better than it actually does regularly. Uh, kind of hides the fact that it's really cheap feeling. And there was this weird thing on the power button I took off. I don't know what that was or what it was for, to be honest with you. And that's pretty much it. It had a SIM tool as well, but you get the idea. So for $94, I got a very cheap Android phone that we'll take a look at in a moment here. But yeah, we'll have to see if this thing lives up to the hype. Also notice that it says HD camera on the back there. That's a good sign. Okay, so this phone's about what I expected in that it's a uh, complete and utter scam. The big marketing feature for it was the quad cameras, which uh, you don't have to look too closely to see that they're fake. Yeah, at first sight, they might look okay. But if you look closely, one camera looks quite a bit different than the other three 
and that's because those three are duds. They're fake. Uh, they're just there to make it look like it has a quad camera, and yeah, that's not exactly a surprise. I've seen that kind of thing on clones before, uh, not personally, just through YouTube. Again, this back here is just a very weird rubbery plastic. It's very cheap. It's very cheap, but I mean, what do you expect? Even the sides are like plastic, even though they don't really look plastic. I have to say they did a good job making this phone look good from the back. Front's a different story. Uh, going to the top of the phone, we have the charging port. That's right, the charging port's on the top for some reason. Uh, we also have a headphone jack there, so at least there's that. Turning on the phone, we can see a very crappy display. This is, uh, well, you can see pixels. This is sub-retina level. Going to settings about phone, apparently we're on Android 10. We have 256 gigabytes of space and 8 gigs of RAM. 10 CPU cores, and the model number is Mate 40 dash Pro 4. Yeah, so this is clearly not true. So the software seems to have kind of like a Samsung skin on it. Uh, the icons look very similar to what a Samsung would have. I really want to see what's actually inside of this thing. So I went ahead and found an app called Inware, which shows us the actual specs of this phone. So uh, let's just say <laughs> it's bad. All right, so we're actually on Android 6 Marshmallow. Yeah, that's right, not Android. 10, shocker. The brand is named Welcome, and the manufacturer is named Welcome. That's, uh, that's questionable. The model is Mate 33 Pro, even though I think I paid for a Mate 40 Pro. The resolution is 960 by 480, which makes a pixel density of 240 pixels per inch. This is terrible. We have two cores, not 10. The CPU is a MediaTek MT6570, which is bad. By the way, this app has crashed on me quite a few times at this point. For RAM, we have a full 0.95 gigabytes. Yeah, that's right. One gigabyte of RAM. And if you think that's bad, get ready for this. We have 4.88 gigabytes of internal storage. Five gigs. This phone has five gigabytes of storage. How is that even possible? The camera is two megapixels. Uh, both of them, the front and the back camera, are both two megapixels. And yeah, that's the basics. This is just a terrible, terrible phone and a complete scam. Not a surprise at all, so it kind of looks cool, but beyond that, this is just, this is awful. One of the worst phones I've ever had the displeasure of looking at. And uh, yeah, let's just move on to the next item. Next up, we've got this white, also kind of sketchy looking box. Uh, if we open it up, we have just a lot of styrofoam. I absolutely hate styrofoam, by the way. It's my pet peeve. Some people have like, you know, the, the sound of nails on a chalkboard drives them crazy. For me, it's styrofoam. I hate it. So for this, I did grab a knife. Let me open this up. And uh, here we have the basically Maverick Pro clone, uh, the drone. I believe it's $40 Canadian. And yeah, I'm not expecting much from this, but if it actually flies and can take some video, I'd be impressed with that. I'd be very happy with that. So we'll see how uh, we got this crappy manual that probably is pretty much useless. Then this is kind of neat, actually. I like this. We have some stickers here and these stickers are to be like put on the front of your drone so you can kind of give it a face or something. I like that. I actually think it's kind of a nice touch. I don't know if other drones do that or not, but uh, here we have the controller, the drone itself. Then in here we have some extra pieces as well as a micro USB cord. Uh, and then pulling out the drone here, we can see it and wow, it is both very small and very light, like really small. Yeah, that's pretty much what we got with this. So this is is one of the things I was looking forward to looking at the most. So let's take this thing out, see if we can get it working, uh, and then we'll come back and take a look at the iPhone from Wish. Okay, so the drone. As you can see here, it's uh, pretty decent looking, very small, very light as mentioned. The battery is really simple. It's just this small cartridge here that just slides into the device and it charges with micro USB. Setting this up, I actually couldn't figure out how to get it to work with the actual remote controller. So instead, I hooked it up to my phone. It connected using its own Wi-Fi network and an app that they have a QR code leading to. It has the tendency to disconnect kind of easily, but it does work. Um, and as you can see here, the drone can take off. Wow, no. Yeah, pretty much immediately I ran into my uh, little fenced off patio deck there. That's just to keep raccoons and stuff out. This thing is hard to control and I'll be completely honest, I didn't figure it out. Now, ideally you'd be in like a big field or something where you have a lot of space. Uh, I didn't record anything off of the drone, even though 
I could have. It shows everything on the phone while you're doing it, which is pretty neat. You can see here though, the controls are fairly complicated. There's a lot of stuff and I, yeah, I couldn't figure out how to properly steer it. I messed around for a little bit, just enough to see that it works, works fairly well. And honestly, for what I paid for it, this actually wasn't a terrible purchase and was worth my money. This would be a nice little stocking stuffer for somebody. Due to time constraints, I couldn't really test this more in depth, but I figured, hey, everyone's seen a drone before. And this one, it's not bad, despite being tiny and uh, pretty cheap. It also apparently records in 720p, which is respectable. So this is probably the only product from here I'd somewhat recommend. Although, of course, you should always look for a better option than anything on Wish. Okay, last but not least, again, I ordered six things. I actually ordered a retro Game Boy thing, uh, like a case that goes on my iPhone 11 Pro Max, as well as a $1 GoPro knockoff, and uh, neither showed up. Both were refunded, so at least they refunded them fairly quickly. Kind of annoying, but uh, you know, it's Wish, so I didn't expect much more from them. So here's the last package, and it's actually one of the least sketchy looking of all of them. Just some plain gray packaging around a white iPhone looking box, but there's literally no branding on it, so that's interesting. Like, it's just pure white. Take the top off here, we have the iPhone 5C in fantastic pink. Wow, that actually looks really good. So this was $108. It wasn't cheap. And um, looking at it without even pulling it out, to be honest with you, this is one of the best condition iPhone 5Cs I think I've ever seen uh, that isn't brand new. It looks fantastic. Uh, taking off the little screen protector thing here, the screen is also flawless. So I don't know if they maybe put a new shell on this thing, new display or what. It is supposed to be refurbished, but it looks really, really good. And it's booting up just fine. So that's a good sign. Pull out the papers here. We have, um, looks like some documentation, which open that up and we have a SIM tool and then some iPhone 5S stuff. Yeah, hmm, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't seem right. Also no Apple stickers, which is uh, very disappointing. So I'll be leaving a negative review. We have a generic USB wall adapter and then we have some Apple looking ear pods. I kind of doubt they're genuine, but you never know. And then we have a lightning cable, which again, definitely not genuine, honestly. And here's the phone. It's working. It's ready to be set up and I'm impressed. Color me impressed. This looks really good. So I'm looking forward to setting this thing up and seeing how it is. $108, way too much for an iPhone 5C nowadays, but uh, I'm still excited to look at it here. So here we have the iPhone 5C. This is definitely one of the best condition 5Cs I've ever looked at. And uh, while I definitely overpaid for it, it'll be nice to have for future videos. The pink is pretty stunning and the phone functions perfectly fine. There really isn't anything I can complain about. It works, the battery seems pretty good to me. The phone actually doesn't feel slow. Just a good reminder that iOS 10 on the iPhone 5 and 5C really wasn't too bad. I think people's big issues with those phones is they often had bad batteries just from years of use. But all in all, this phone is totally okay. Now, could you use it anymore? Uh, absolutely not. I mean, you could, but like, you really shouldn't. The iPhone 5S or SE is much better. And uh, well, you could actually find it for less than I found this phone for. That being said, uh, it is really unique with the pink. This phone is definitely much better than that crappy Android I got in like every single possible way. Storage wise, I did only get 16 gigabytes as the bigger storage options were more expensive. But uh, yeah, again, I, there's not a lot to talk about here. It just, it works really well and I'm, I'm pretty impressed. This is about as flawless as you'll see an iPhone 5C nowadays. And uh, well, I think I'm about done here. So let's go back to the desk. So uh, yeah, that was it. That was uh, what we got from Wish. I would say I'm very, um, not overwhelmed, not underwhelmed. Uh, I'm very whelmed right now. It's about what I expected. The 5C though, I was pretty impressed by. I didn't expect it to be in the condition it was in. So uh, yeah. I guess buying a refurbished phone on Wish isn't a terrible idea. I still wouldn't do it. I think if you're buying from a verified seller on Wish, it's probably an okay thing to do. But uh, if you're doing that, it's probably not underpriced which kind of defeats the whole purpose of buying on Wish. Ultimately, I'm gonna be sticking to eBay and uh, you probably should too, or Amazon, of course. And uh, yeah, it was an interesting experience. So if you guys wanna see more videos on Wish in the future, be sure to let me know. If you found this video interesting, maybe hit that like button and uh, consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech if you'd like to for some reason. And we have a Discord link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech and I will see you all next time. Thank you.